Imagine loving your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, welcome back to the podcast, Women in the Middle. I'm your host, Susie Rosenstein, your master certified coach and midlife mentor. And I'm so glad to be here with you again for this week's episode, which is all about getting to the bottom of what triggers your resistance. Even resistance for things you want. (laughs) So crazy, right? It doesn't even make sense on paper. But I know that you know what I mean. We're going deep into this whole thing, and I'm excited to share this with you. But first, this episode is sponsored by something really new that's going to be launching soon, and I want to tell you all about it. It's called the Finally First Midlife Membership. Finally First is a life-changing, upbeat virtual community for midlife women just like you. One thing I've heard time and time again from clients, from listeners, from women in my free Facebook group is that it is a total drag to feel stuck. It's such a waste of time, and it is so frustrating. And it's weird. You've probably never been stuck quite like this before. You've always been able to unconfuse yourself (laughs) and get going again. But this time at this age, not so much. Things feel different. Now, the good news is that midlife does not have to be this way. You can make Finally First your favorite one-stop shop for all of the midlife coaching, mindfulness, and guidance that you need. As you may know, I was trained at the Life Coach School, where I'm also an instructor, and I am super confident about how I can help you create the future that you want. You'll also get to connect with an amazing bunch of like-minded women like you who know what it's like to be in a midlife funk and are ready to bust out and get excited about their lives again. Here's all you have to do right now. Just get on the VIP waitlist. Sign up for updates and launch information there and stay connected so you'll hear about the details first. The Finally First Midlife Membership is here to help you put yourself first and get the midlife support and community you've been looking for. It's where you need to be, and it won't be the same without you. Seriously, your voice and experience are needed. So get over there. Just head over to www.coachwithsusie.com forward slash membership. That's coachwithsusie with a Z dot com forward slash membership and sign up for the VIP waitlist now so you are in the loop and don't miss a thing. You never know. It usually makes sense. It usually pays to be on a list like this. I am just saying. Okay, let's dive in. What a topic for today. It's the same day as the first snow of the season here in Toronto. I have a huge resistance to cold weather, so when it starts a few weeks earlier than normal, I am triggered for sure. (laughs) Now, my kids would disagree. They love snow, but me, not so much. This isn't the resistance I'm talking about, though, for today. I'm much more curious about how you tend to resist what you want. I got to thinking about this lately because I found something when I was cleaning up a pile or two and I was reorganizing my office. I'm really trying hard to throw things out that are no longer relevant or that I'm not using. And for those of us who didn't grow up completely in the digital age, it's still easy to think you need more paper than you do. Can you relate? (laughs) I have piles of paper everywhere. I fall squarely in that camp. So I found some notes from my coach certification training way back in early 2014, just six months after I received my layoff notice. Now, at that time, I was thrilled to have some direction again. I was so excited to have found the Life Coach School. I'm sure it's no surprise that when you train to become a life coach, you also have to be coached a lot. The idea is that the more coaching you get, the better a coach you'll be. The idea is that getting coaching on all of your brain shenanigans, the better a coach you'll be. (laughs) I was kind of curious about what I'd written. It was like opening a diary, a treasure trove. What insights were blowing my mind way back then? And to my surprise, I found a note from the coach who coached me. It was about an old thought and related goal that were kicking my butt back then. It was about regular exercise. 
Now, I have a history with exercise. I'm full of what I call fits and starts. That is, it doesn't happen continuously, but stops and then starts again many times. It's been like that with me and exercise. It's been like that with the gym. It's been like that with running. And it's been like that with tennis. Actually, I've had the most success with tennis, but it's hard on my knees now that I've had an injury. So the note, it was in the notebook. It's funny, now I'm trying a digital notebook called Remarkable. It's really good. I'll have to keep you posted on that. Um, It's for paper people, just like me. (laughs) But back then I had notebooks. I love notebooks. I would set them up for everything. And here's what it said. It was a note from my coach. It said, my hunch is the word need triggers your resistance. Now, what she was talking about was my thought, I need to exercise. Let's pause here for a second and really think about this. I wanted to exercise regularly. I was thinking something like, I need to exercise. I should be exercising. Exercising is the right thing to do, right? Those kinds of thoughts. So the one we took a look at is I need to exercise. Now, I'm sure if you're like me, you might also think things like this. I need to get healthy. I need to move more. I need to eat better. I need to get more sleep. I need to lose weight. I need to eat less sugar. I need to walk more. I need to travel more. I need to find more time to myself. All this stuff appears to be in the self-care type of category. (laughs) Oh my gosh, you guys, my reading glasses just hit the microphone (laughs) as I was talking. I hope you didn't hear it. (sighs) Okay. Most people do not walk around noticing the connection between their thoughts, feelings, and actions. Do you? Maybe since you've been listening to the podcast. It's so hard to see when you're thinking something that's not serving you. You're just in it, right? Especially when it's a quiet, innocent thought, like something that you always think. It's kind of like a should thought. Do you see what I mean? It's a thought that you think that seems to be fine because it's kind of noble. It makes sense. You agree that you should be doing whatever it is. You don't question it or even that you need to be doing whatever it is. So you think it and you feel like you're on the right track. Well, sort of, right? You don't get the results that you want. There's the rub. You're still not healthy. You're still not moving more. You're still not eating better. You're still not getting more sleep. You're still not losing weight. You're still not eating less sugar. You're still not walking more. You're still not traveling more, yada, yada, yada. I put travel in the self-care category, by the way. Uh, The bottom line is you're not finding more time for yourself. You're certainly not putting yourself first. So what's going on here, you might be wondering. You are thinking something that sounds good, but you're not getting the results that you want. There is definitely a disconnect, and it is because of your thinking. The thought is not working for you. It's creating an emotional state for you that's not helping you do the things you want to do, even though the thought looks good on paper. It's triggering a different emotion. It's creating a different feeling than one that is useful. It's not that it's a bad thought. It's that it's not a useful thought, but you don't even notice that because it seems so good on paper. Someone in the world is thinking that thought and having a different result than you are. It's personal, but it's not useful for you. So back to that note, it said the word need was not working for me. For me, the thought was I need to exercise more. Yet I wasn't, even though I wanted to. So what can be done in a case like this? Well, if you are a listener to this podcast, you know the answer. It is your thoughts. You can change the way you're thinking about it. Whatever it is, this is on you. So first, you have to notice what's happening up there. You have to become more aware of your thinking and be clear on the results that you're getting and then see if there is a disconnect. If you look around the room and in your life and notice what is actually happening, you can assess it. You got to see what's actually happening and take responsibility for it and then realize that there's a thought lurking around that is creating that result. It's putting all of that together. That's why awareness is so powerful. If you don't like your results, you have to step up to the plate if you want a different result. So ask yourself, look around, assess, 
Do you like your results? If the answer is no, you have some work to do. That thought is not useful, no matter how good it looks on paper. It's not necessarily good or bad. It's just that it's not useful for you. It's not a useful thought for you. So thinking that I need to do something brings out something in me, an emotional feeling that doesn't drive the behavior I need to accomplish that goal. It's maybe, sometimes I think it's rebelliousness, but it's not, it's overwhelm. It's overwhelm. And I notice when I feel overwhelmed, that doesn't support me focusing on the small daily goals, the small daily steps I need to accomplish the overarching goal. That's what happens. It just doesn't work for me. That that thought about need does not generate the feeling that I need to do the thing I want to do. So what do you notice for you? I bet you're thinking about something you're resisting right now. Whatever it is, the thought doesn't help me lean into doing the thing. It's the opposite. So if I want to create one of those results, I have to feel a feeling that helps me do all of the things that I would have to do to guarantee success in that area. It's all about your feelings, actually, surprisingly enough. Everything you do in this world or don't do is because of how you feel or how you want to feel. Are you familiar with this concept of baby steps? So there's baby steps activities like the one I just mentioned, but there's also baby step thoughts. It's like a bridge We call them bridge thoughts. It's a bridge that takes you a little farther from your current thinking to a new thought that you believe can be more useful. The idea is that you can add a phrase to many of your non-useful thoughts to help them serve you better. So I'm going to take you through this example because I'm sure that you've got something that you're thinking. If you're resisting doing a thing that you want to do, you need to trace it back to the thought that's creating that resistance. So for me, that resistance is very closely related to overwhelm. That's what ends up happening to me. And the result is that I don't do the things I want to do to create more exercise in my life on a regular basis. I get into the fits and starts things. uh, And this has been happening over the years. I see it very, very clearly. It's something that I work on often and I'm working on it right now. I'm actually having some success right now, which is awesome. I have Peloton helping me. (laughs) But it was just so funny to see this note from six years ago. Okay, so here are some suggestions for bridge thoughts for this situation. And then I want you to apply them to whatever is coming up for you about the way you're thinking about something you want to do. So suggestion number one is adding the phrase, I choose. So then it would be something like this. I choose to exercise more, for example. Super empowering, not being told what to do, even when I'm telling myself what to do (laughs) or what I should be doing, creates a very different feeling for me. I'm focusing on my choice. So for you, it could be I'm choosing to get more sleep. I'm choosing to eat less. I'm choosing to move less. I'm choosing to lose weight, Uh, anything like that. So really uh, play with it, play with it and see what comes up for you. Number two, here's another suggestion. Add the phrase, I'm in the process. Here's how it would work with this example. I'm in the process of exercising more. (laughs) Remember, your goal is to create the feeling that drives the behavior that you want. So if you're moving forward instead of staying stuck in resistance, it might be useful. Process emphasizes learning the skill one step at a time. And for me, that works. Here's another one. Example number three, add the phrase I'm learning to. This is also one of my favorites. I'm a learner. I love to learn. So the suggested thought here to play with would be I'm learning to exercise. Or you could apply it to anything you're trying to do. So it could be I'm learning to lose weight. I'm learning to uh, have a morning routine. I'm learning to eat according to hunger. I'm learning to incorporate exercise into my life more often. I'm learning to rest. I'm learning to do nothing. You see what I mean? When it comes to learning for me, I have a proven track record of learning. I don't have any problem believing that I can learn. So 
So there are three suggested bridge thoughts, adding the phrase, I choose, adding the phrase, I'm in the process of, and adding the phrase, I'm learning to. Bridge thoughts to take you from your current way of thinking to leaning in to a new belief about what you are able to do. It's so interesting, right? I like to think of resistance as a big fat clue to something that needs more attention. (laughs) Not a failure. It's just, hello, we need more attention here. Something you need to notice, something that's getting in the way. It is your thinking. Even thoughts that look okay on paper, they look so innocent, they look noble, your friends wouldn't necessarily call you out on any of them. If you have resistance, you got to take a look. If you want to change, if you don't want to change what's happening in your life, you don't have to take a look. But if you want to change and do more of the things that you want to do and be more intentional about how you spend your time, you do have to take a look. The important thing to remember is to notice if your thinking is useful for you. You have to open your eyes to the results that you are getting. You are creating them. Big, giant change in the way most of us look at our lives. And then you don't just put your head back into the sand. You take responsibility for your own thinking. This is thinking on purpose. Sure, you could coast and basically not move forward, whining and whining all the way home about why you're still not doing this or that, what you're struggling with. Or you could work on intentionally finding the thoughts that will help propel you forward. Big giant shift. It's adulting, my friend. (laughs) It is a big shift, but this is the shift that will help propel you forward to grow, to be more fulfilled, to actually stop whining and complaining and set yourself up for success. That's what thinking on purpose is all about. That is what midlife on purpose is all about too. Well, that's it for this episode. My focus as a midlife coach is to help you waste less time and get excited about your life again. Being the queen of your brain domain is the best way to be. Check out the show notes with more information and links at suzyrosenstein.com. Download my free ebook, Nine Secrets to Get Unstuck in Your 50s at www.suzyrosenstein.com forward slash nine secrets. And whenever you're ready, there are three great ways I can help you learn to create your midlife on purpose. One, join the free Women in the Middle community Facebook group and connect with other amazing midlife women who are ready to start regret-proving their lives too. Just head over to www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash women in the middle community. Two, work with me directly and get coaching that will help you change your life. Go ahead and grab your kickstart call right away at www.talktosuzy.com. And three, get on the VIP wait list for your new midlife membership, Finally First. This is an affordable, upbeat virtual community for women who are ready to create midlife on purpose. Sign up at www.coachwithsusie.com forward slash membership. Let's do this, ladies. It is time for you to be finally first. Thanks so much for listening, and I will talk to you next week.